We begin with the White House blaming Democrats for this partial government shutdown. The standoff over the wall funding is expected now to stretch into the new year, presenting a day one challenge for the next Speaker of the House, presumably Nancy Pelosi. Here now to talk about it, Republican Congressman from Texas, Louis Gohmert, who's a member of the House Freedom Caucus and the House Judiciary Committee, where he's the vice chairman on the subcommittee on crime, terrorism, and homeland security. Uh, Representative Gohmert, thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, it's, if, it feels it, we've, we've come a long way. We're a week into this, and uh, I'm not sure that the American public necessarily feels an impact, but the political pressure seems to be mounting day by day. Play out the possibilities of how this may end. Well, it's going to end at some point because uh, there are things that have not been funded that the Democrats desperately want to fund, be it HUD and some other things. But... Uh, the truth is, there is nothing more important than the nation's security. It's our number one job in the U.S. Congress, keeping America safe. And when you have people that are here legally from Mexico, from Central America, saying, get the wall where we need it, secure the border, you've got to make this country safe, uh, I don't know why they're not being listened to. And, and when you hear Democrats saying, oh, no, it's immoral to have a wall, and they say that while they're living behind a wall around their houses, like uh, President Obama I read his new home has a 10-foot wall around it, walls matter. They do make a difference. And this isn't like the Iron Curtain that kept people in to deal with what Natan Sharansky called a fear society. If we're going to have a free society, it's got to be protected. And uh, Randy Weber said that he saw a bumper sticker in Houston that said, uh, heaven has walls, pearly gates, and a strict immigration policy. Hell has no borders, <laughs> no walls, and no immigration party uh, right. a, a policy. There's something to that, Charles. And there, it, there it is, is something a priority. To it. But let me... Let me let me jump well, in for a second, though. Charles, uh, uh, let me let me just jump in yeah. for a second, though, because I think that the Democrats sure, again course, playing the political, playing the game of politics understand what you're saying. I mean, I think uh, if they don't yeah. have a wall, they certainly lock their doors at night. Uh, so they've tried to sort of yeah. make it a game of semantics. Okay, maybe not a wall, but quote unquote security. I think that means drones and other things like that. I mean, is that a viable alternative in your mind? Well, Janet Napolitano spoke for the Democratic Party while she was uh, Secretary of Homeland Security. We had appropriated billions of dollars, uh, much of which was supposed to be a virtual wall. The drones, the you know, all of this uh, security, cameras and all that. And she ended up ruling that that was not uh, a legitimate use of the money and she nullified what we appropriated money to do. Now, there was escape provision in case she felt like uh, it was uh, better spent elsewhere, but the fact is she declared that was not a proper use of the money. So this is total hypocrisy for Democrats to come along now after they squandered that money, we haven't been able to find out where, and say, oh, no, this would be where we put it. No, we played that game before. When right. we got you the money, you didn't use it for that. We have got to have a tangible wall where we need it. And as Secretary Nielsen has pointed out, when, when we have a wall, over 95 percent of the illegal immigration in that area stops. That is important. But uh, when we look at whether this thing is the shutdown, how long before it ends, you look at each party's priority. And, and I love Justice Scalia. I was having lunch with him one day, and he said, and I don't remember who the attorney general was, but when he worked for him, he came right. in one day and he said, hey, I heard a great definition for the difference between Democrats and Republicans. He said, Democrats want to control everything and everybody, and Republicans don't want them to. Now, when you're plotting a strategy like that, it's more of a defense than anything to well, another party that wants to control people's lives, I think they're not smart enough. So is we've there, got our work chance, cut out for us, but Gomer, it's more me, defensive it, from here. Is there sure. a chance of a, for a, perhaps a grander compromise? Uh, you know, a week or so ago, there was talk of maybe uh, the Republicans coming down a little bit, the White House coming down from its $5 billion number yeah. and the Rep Democrats going up. But what about a grander compromise? Maybe the reintroduction of DACA, the offer that President Trump, I thought was an amazingly, uh, amazing offer, amazingly generous with respect to what he campaigned on, uh, coming back with something uh, for, for greater funding for the wall, greater funding for DACA, 
maybe some immigration policy adjustments because we saw the tragic death of all police officers seeing in California. Could this be a chance to take it in a different direction and finally to deliver to the American people honest solutions so that we don't have to deal with this anymore? Yeah, well, we're going to have to keep dealing with it until we do have the border secure. Any offer of amnesty before the border is secure, our border patrolmen make clear day after day. You guys talk about even legality, amnesty, anything of that nature, Charles. It is a shiny object. It's an attraction that draws thousands and thousands more every day. And so we need to secure the border, and then we can work these things out. But like you said, the president went over backwards to try to negotiate, and he was slapped back for it. And I do think this president is and will prove himself to be the best negotiator we've had, at least in my lifetime. And it helps if uh, people think he's a little bit crazy. You get better deals that way. But uh, he made that offer. Right. But I'm telling you, in states like Texas, um, if you do an amnesty before the border's secure, you can say goodbye to uh, Republicans winning elections in those states ever again. Okay, and there we've goes got less the than a minute to so go, so I do want to ask... It's a serious, deadly I, serious. I do want to ask you, uh, uh, Representative Gomer, do you believe then ultimately the Democrats will cave and they will come through with some additional funding uh, where they are right now for this border wall? Well, with... Uh, Nancy Pelosi expected to be speaker, and she's in Hawaii. Most of us have been on alert, ready to run back to Washington at a moment's notice. But as long as she's in Chicago, the I mean, <laughs> Hawaii, the, uh, the odds are zero. All Once right. she gets back, then I'm hoping that some grander scheme can be worked out, a compromise worked out. You can compromise on numbers. That That's something that's compromisable. But when you... Uh, are asked to compromise on principles that include the security of the country, more precious officers being killed, more children being lured into their deaths. I mean, that's something we really need to stand up for those lives that are being lost, yeah. both legal Americans here and illegal Americans being attracted into their death. It's time to protect this attractive nuisance uh, is what's called in uh, legal realm like a swimming pool. If a child comes in, falls in your pool and dies from drowning, every state has laws that said that landowner is going to likely be held accountable. Right. And so the Democrats need to understand this is on them. Yeah, it's uh, we've had three tragedies in the last week that all point to yes, we the desperate have. need to finally, and that won't be the last. finally find a solution for this. And of course, it won't be the last for sure. Thank you very much, sir. Always appreciate it. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. See you soon. Charles, love talking to you. Thank you.